Hi, this is Bob Weiss. I'm the host of Shaking Your World. Cheers. Folks, welcome home. Yet another edition of Shaking Your World here at the Marvelous Shakers in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, once again, we've got a very good friend of the house, uh, Paul Bork, which is here to uh, cook off a, a little fun thing. So very basic American food today. We're doing grilled cheese. Got a couple of fun little spins on this. And uh, I mean, there's nothing more wholesome and heartwarming in so many ways than a fine grilled cheese sandwich. And I hope we can do that today. So Paul, welcome home. And here we are. Let's, uh, let's have at it. I appreciate it, Bob. And uh, I appreciate you keeping the, uh, the basics down for me. There's not much I can keep up with you in the kitchen. But I certainly appreciate it that uh, we can do just a classic like this that is relatively simple, but there's a million takes on it. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got the uh, ubiquitous onions here, <laughs> sautéing just, just to, you know. I, like, back I love onions. And if you remember from the great onion cook-off, um, with those going there, <laughs> I'm in my element. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, this can't be any simpler, at least from my perspective. I'm just going to start off with some butter. And we've got a fine, of course, Wisconsin agriculture product here. So i got some butter just going away. Have at it any way you want to in yours. I use just a little butter. Uh, we got her on here, Bob. There you go. Flame on. <laughs> Flame on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start mine up and get this melting and I'll pour some of this off because I don't want to have too much, but I will want to have some additional butter to finish off the backside. Paul's got a different uh, perspective on that and uh, well, we'll see what happens. I use a little less butter and a little more on the bread itself. That is certainly just uh, whatever you prefer. I've just found out that's uh, worked well in the, in the past without really screwing it up. By the way, we will be using these uh, same pans here for our great omelet cook-off uh, oh sometime in the future. No, that's a little more difficult. No, no, child play. For those of anybody that knows about cooking, omelets are difficult. That's why I'm afraid to do that one. So I've got two different cheddars here today, and one is a one-year-aged cheddar, and one is a hickory smoked cheddar. And Paul, what are you working with right there? Uh, well, I just already shredded up a little Gouda. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't smoked Gouda, Wisconsin Gouda, and now I'm going to uh, shred up a little Munster and I'm going to mix this up uh, with a little shredded sharp cheddar. I just think the three cheeses like that really uh, work well together. The sharp cheddar pushes through. The Munster is rich and the Gouda is just creamy, especially when you uh, heat her up good. I agree. So what I'm doing here is I've just taken a little bit of rye. This is a simple, uh, the little basic caraway rye bread. And I put that to two slices in. I'm moving around a little bit so I get a good, uh, consistent coating on all sides of both slices. And I've got the heat down uh, relatively low right now, and I'll boost it up just a little bit. I don't want the butter to burn, obviously. Um, so I'm going to cut just some cheese, and um, you know I've got this aged product right in front of me. And why not this? So Paul likes to shred it because um, it will uh, have a tendency to heat more consistently. Uh, this, however, is what I was what I was brought up with. And I kind of like that gooey little center kind of a thing. So uh, this is what I'm doing. Either way works equally as well. And um, I suggest that you sample both until you find it works the best for you. So I just got this going, as we said. So I've got just a little, you can see the, the butter is breaking in the bottom of the pan. And I'm just gonna put one top onto the base and let that go a little further. And then in a moment or two, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to add some of the other butter that I already melted and drew off the pan. So you're going through the, what, two, three cheese combinations? Three cheese combination. The Gouda, sounds, the Munster, and the Sharp Cheddar. Sounds delish. You don't have to mix it up perfect. What kind of bread are you going to go with? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, just a Wisconsin brioche. Brioche. It just sounded like the thing to do at it, the it, time. It does, it does. Good butter content, I love it, excellent. You know, people talk about what kind of a flipper to use and all sorts of things. Just a standard spatula works fine if you want to use tongs. It really doesn't matter. This is, this is the kind of thing that you teach your kids when they're little and they can cook for the rest of their lives. And it is incredibly just wholesome and wonderful. So now we've got, uh, I flipped and I'm just taking a little more of that butter that I melted off already. And there we are, that of the pan. It already smells good. Move this around. So this rye bread is a little bit dense, so we're not 
uh, necessarily getting as much of the butter into it. It's more laying on the surface. Um, I have, I prefer uh, to have just this incredible, like being in France, just this incredible buttery bread complexion. The same thing Paul's going to get with his brioche, actually. So, in so many ways, we have nice melting taking place here. Nice melting taking place here. So, we can consider this to be done. I'll consider it to be done anyway. That's our first step. Maybe we'll get this to our lovely bartender and uh, have her taste this at some point. And I'm going to add uh, some cheese to this. Uh, I've learned to always use a little more than you'll think. Yep, cheese does a... Uh, I'm going to get my top sure. going here just in a, little, in a little butter. Then you'll notice I'm going to flip her over, which a lot of people don't know. And then... We got a spatula. Oh, a uh, flat one. There we go, right here. I'm going to raise the heat a little. It's usually just a couple minutes. That's all it takes. While you're doing that, I'll do uh, one on a little of this sourdough I've got here. So, you know, more butter. Remember the movie The Last Tango in Paris? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just more a butter. Little, little more butter. More butter. <laughs> Shameless plug here for our crack sauce as well, by the way. So, uh, there's much to be said for a uh, roasted chili and roasted garlic hot sauce, just like this one, to go along with this marvelous comfort food here. So I've cut this a little bit thicker because I'm going to have it as a slower cooking process. I just want a real depth of flavor taking place here. So again, sourdough. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to flip this over so I get a real good butter flavor on the inside. Because again, I'm having a little flashback to, uh, to France. Oh, you're going to go to that double thing over that there. Double thing over here, yeah. Excellent. I'm digging that. And touch more butter. So, Paul, tonight you're going to a uh, Oktoberfest-ish kind of a gig. Yes. What are you uh, going to have on that uh, bill of fare tonight? Well, there's going to be uh, roasted wild boar that I was with uh, the host when we did harvest it uh, down in Missouri. And there's going to be a, I was told not to bring sausage because everyone is bringing sauces <laughs> of any German uh, sure. variety. Sure. So uh, I picked up some good German beer. Excellent. Over at Total Wine. Sure. You like those folks over there a yep. lot? Yep, yep, yep. Great selection. There we go. Lovely. You gonna cut that in party pieces for the <laughs> Well no 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 no. This is we're gonna get this for people to try here. Okay. I always let it sit just for a minute just so it holds up sure. just a little better. Right. Otherwise right. it gets a little gooey when they uh, yep. they come apart. Yep. So I'm just gonna let that sit a bit and then I'm going to start thinking about the next one here. Mm-hmm. And Which I'll show you doing? how uh, a friend of mine in college showed me how his mom did it. And what's interesting, instead of may or instead of uh, butter on the bread, they use mayo. Little uh, higher flash point on mm -hmm. it. Yep. Uh, very rich, and it gives it uh, uh, kind of a, a little fuller body, yep. almost an egg taste to it. Sure. Um, I've done it in the past with a half mayo, half butter kind of mixture. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to give her a shot and see what happens. Sounds great. Let me uh, grab something for right you. Absolutely. Thank you. I 
think this one is set. So oh, the rug that I'm going with is a little bit of gorgonzola on top of this. So we get uh, wheels in and we break it down and we use this for anything from our pizzas to you know, literally almost anything. And this is uh, made in Wisconsin, of course, the dairy state. And it is just sumptuous. So gorgonzola. And then I'm going to have a little bit more of the, uh, the cheddar in there. I just want a little full-bodied flavor taking place, which I will accomplish by having two completely different products. Now on this one with the mayo, I've always done it at a little lower temperature. Mm -hmm. Even though it has a higher flash point, it just seems to work better. I don't understand the science on that one, but... <laughs> Some things just are what they are. They are what they are, exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, if you like gorgonzola or blue cheese, this just smells divine. If you don't, it still smells divine. Now for this one, because I'm going a little lower temperature, do you have, is there a cover for this pan, Bob? Um, well, or sure. just something I can put over it for a minute. How about this pan? Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, of course, because you have a restaurant here, I have all sorts of other things I can play with. So I can take this, for example, and put this in my oven right over here for a moment. Oh, you're going to finish it off that way. That's sneaky. So I get more ambient heat as opposed to just directional heat, so we're not going to risk... Well, oh, this keeps turning off. Must not like the pan, sorry about that. Now, a grilled cheese with some caramelized onions, that sounds... Well, now, I had thought about that. Uh -huh. But uh, we're going to kind of do a... A little crazy play just on the grilled cheese because I thought about prosciutto, sure. bacon, yeah. and um, sometimes you go to a restaurant, uh, a good tavern or a bar, or even a fancy place when they have the grilled cheese, it comes out, it's actually a sandwich mm -hmm. with a lot of cheese on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think it gets away from the grilled cheese I, you I know, that we, we, we all think about, a, a, a pretty simple sandwich. But you certainly can't combine anything whatsoever on these things. There is no wrong way to do a grilled cheese sandwich. Whatever makes you happy, Whatever right? Whatever makes you happy, absolutely. If it tastes good, that's, that's what makes you happy. Cook it for yourself, you cook it for the people you love, you cook it for your family, whatever the case may be. Hopefully, you love your family. Um, yeah, but I think I'll do one more, and I think I will put some of these in here. I think I'm also going to do... Oh, boy. I want, a, I want some of that. I'm also going to do some pickles. So yes. I, I also have, brought some pickles for my uh, next one. Great minds. I do bread and butter. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like them, and just a little of them. We're not making this a, a pickle sandwich with cheese. Right. It's still a grilled cheese, and you're just putting a little extra zing in there. Mm -hmm. And I like how the uh, the bread and butter, the sweetness kind of cuts through, which you could save with the dill. Mm -hmm. Now we're coming up to my two-minute mark here. We're going to let it go just a little while because I turned it down. Give that a taste while we're here. Oh, that's good. Is there booze in there? No. No? But they are awfully good. Ooh. Uh, is there a fruit component? No. Just, you know, standard herbs and spices. Oh, it's very good. Thank you. Thank you. Those are very good. Well, thank you. Wow. There you go. There's just another example if you take the time to make something yourself. Those are great pickles, by the way. I'm going to set this down. Now, the brioche you've got to be a little more careful with. It's not nearly as hearty, or how should I say sturdy, as uh, some of your rye or your sourdoughs. So that's why I opted for the uh, flat spatula. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like something like that, you can almost just pick up. It's a good, sturdy sandwich. Mm -hmm. So, again, in my mind, this is the way I want it to look anyway, but any way you want it to be is perfect for you. 
So this is the combination of blue cheese and the aged cheddar on a San Francisco sourdough bread. That looks fantastic. Easy peasy. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Cheers. And the beauty of nonstick pans. And the beauty of nonstick pans. Now, do you you rarely use those uh, when you've got something going on in the restaurant? Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of a, just a little bit of a luxury. Um, is that because they don't hold up as well in the industrial? Well, that's part of it. But I also want to get a, a little sear on like the meats. Yes, we did the wild sure. game yesterday. Yep. So uh, even the ones I finished off today for uh, the doctor outside, I, I want to get a little sear. I'm not going to get that with the nonstick pan. Right. So that's that's pretty much the reason why. But you are correct. They, uh, the way we go through pans here on a daily basis, we turn these several times a day because we're busy. And uh, they, would not, they would not remotely hold up to that after a short period of time. Oh. I've heard that before. A friend of mine said, no, we don't use them at work, so it's kind of a little bit of a luxury at home. And then, hey, wiping them out. Rinse it, wipe that thing out, and you're ready to go. Wham, bam. All right, so I'm going to go back to the rye bread right now because I want to get a little more flavor. And obviously, with the caraway, it does have that component going on. Um, you see that I'm using towel here, and the reason is because I had this in the oven, and it is hot. The oven's currently at 550 degrees, so I'm not a fan of burning myself. I managed to do that just fine all by myself. So I'm going to take a little of the uh, caramelized onion here. Before Bob goes on, here is the, tree, the three cheese and the brioche that I did. A little lighter color, but that was uh, due to the mayonnaise little higher uh, flash point on it and uh, I want people to try that. I think that's beautiful by the way. Just let it sit a second. Oh yeah. There's grilled cheese heaven. So we got the caramelized onions and I got some of these uh, quickie pickles that I brined last night after our big dinner was over and um, Get a nice little sear taking place there, and it's time for cheese. Cheese, please. And if you're not going to shred the cheese as uh, as Polly has, I would go ahead and, and slice it as thinly as you can. Any food that you have thin cut has more interaction with air, and it's actually going to taste better anyway. But it also will expedite the melting process, which is what we want to happen with a grilled cheese sandwich. And by the way, I realized uh, in life that most grilled cheese sandwiches never see a grill. They're almost always <laughs> done in a pan, sometimes in a flat top, but not on a grill per se. Well, you know how I like onions, Bob. Mm -hmm. And I don't like when people tell me they're grilled. Grilled sounds too easy. And, and again, in our onion cook-off, that's a lot of effort to caramelize those things correctly. I think it sells them a little short, to be honest. I would agree with you. So if you have equal parts of egg and cheese, does it become then an egg sandwich? I think it does in most, uh, you think about a George Webbs or something like that, or breakfast sure. situations, that's an egg sandwich. And I wonder why that is. I think we know a guy that has chickens. We gotta start bringing in some of his eggs. <laughs> hey, I brought in some duck eggs that we used uh, a couple of times in the last week or so. And uh, they're interesting to work with. They got a real thick membrane on them. If you haven't uh, done them before, they're supposed to have twice the fat content of a yep. hen's egg. And um, and I just learned this. A buddy of mine wants to do a little hobby farm. Sure. And um, did you know ducks produce more eggs than chickens? Right. And they produce longer and they live longer. No. Oh. It was just a little uh, um, research that he did on it. I found that. I like duck eggs. I've really never worked with them, but I like them. That's interesting how they, uh, they cost more than hen eggs, and yet 
if you got a better yield and you got a better lifespan, that's, you know, well, like anything else in marketing, I suppose, right? <laughs> so we're going to do a brioche, and this time we're going to leave that butter in the pan. Okay. Then I don't have to mix her up. Mm -hmm. um, edge to edge with everything, mm -hmm. I think. Not cutting the crust off? <laughs> nope. No, no, no. Are you kidding? <laughs> Yeah, clearly. Now we're going to go with all Gouda. We kind of want to spread it out. We don't want any big chunks. On this one, we're going to come in with just some of the Perfect. Bread and butter pickles. I'm purposely not spooning them out because I don't want to get any more of the... Uh, and I already drained I drained them and then cut them up, diced mm -hmm. them up. And you can still see the liquid that ended up at the bottom here. Mm -hmm. And we don't want that because that makes for soggy uh, yeah. grilled cheese, and that's no good. May I get that oh, hand, sir? Please, of course. That makes for uh, soggy grilled cheese, and we don't want that. And then for me, it's just watching the watch. And I've always used two minutes as my mark, and it's really always always served me well. Mm -hmm. That looks really good, Bob, by the way. And that is still a grilled cheese sandwich, I think. Okay. We're not adding protein to it. We're not adding, right. you know, four or five ingredients to it. Sure. Again, had one up north that was fantastic, but it had butter and avocado and tomato. So to me, that was a butter or a uh, an avocado, tomato, and bacon sandwich. sandwich. That's what it was. Right. With agree. cheese. <laughs> With cheese, yeah. Well. It was delicious. It really was. And with the change of seasons, what a great simple sandwich to make. I think everyone kind of considers it just a good, simple comfort food. Uh-huh. And what side doesn't go with this? You know, you, whether you're going picnic sides, you're going to go breakfast sides, um, everything goes with it. It's just versatile. I believe that's why it's a beloved sandwich. Beloved. Yep. Well, yeah. very simple. That looks great. You know, we can each do a Velveeta one. How's that? Hand me Look some of that it. generic white bread, sir. Where, uh, where did, oh, there you go. This is going to be the stuff that you're just pulling out of your cabinet in your fridge on a Saturday morning. There you go. Maybe uh, a few bourbons the night before. <laughs> Probably a few <laughs> bourbons the night before. <laughs> oh, that one got, that was two minutes. Hmm. That's all right. Induction is tricky to work with sometimes. It uh, speeds up faster than you think it does. It uh, just is, again, the way that is sometimes. That one's still fine in my book. No, I... Hard to find one that's... If you remember fine. in the 90s, everything was black, and I could have served that at a Cajun restaurant. That's also a fact. I might steal that technique, Bob. I like that. It's a lot less screwing around or waiting for the, the, the cheese to get room or the butter to get room temperature and then spreading it on. I really do like that. But then you've been doing this in the kitchen where you're trying to be as efficient as possible. So I can't actually recall the last time that I had Velveeta. The clock's ticking and it's getting down there. I think you're going to have it here pretty quick. Soybean is my guess that they originally derived this from. I honestly don't know what Velveeta is made from. But we've established it's not cheese. Yeah, on the package, it, it made no mention of cheese. They put it in the cheese aisle. They put it next to cheese. It looks like cheese. 
So I think it's one of those things where they just, they let it go. Every bread, we're using the same butter, the same pans, every bread is going to toast or burn differently. Absolutely. And that is part of the function of how much sugar they have inside or any number. Before we started, I told you I was a little uh, nervous about yep. the brioche, which I really like a lot. Yep. Um, and I've never done it before. And I am seeing that my two minute mark isn't working. So, or it's not as uh, reliable, I should say. That one did okay. And when I was growing up, that one would have been mine because my sisters wouldn't have touched no, it. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. See, that one turned out nice. I guess I just had, I got to pull her back to about a minute and a half versus uh, the two minutes. And that's the one with the, uh, uh, this was all Gouda and the uh, bread and butter pickles. So we're going to let that sit just for a minute before we cut it so we don't make a mess. Every uh, young mother's delight because this, this whole sandwich took two minutes to make, if that. And, uh, you know, Velveeta melts incredibly quickly. White bread, obviously, toasts up incredibly quickly. So here, just the, the all-American grilled cheese sandwich. How about that? So what's this one going to be? I don't know. Um, okay. I'm looking here. Let me. Oh, yeah. Just got to let her sit just a minute. And they cut so much easier. I but think who, we, who can wait? Well, that's, <laughs> it, it's like hot pizza, Bob. Yep. You got it. You know you should let it open it up, let it sit for just a little while. What my dad used to do is pull every other slice out about halfway. Sure. So you open up the pizza box, you open that up, right. and he says it cools faster. And he was right. Yeah. Now we still burn ourselves because we didn't yeah. wait like we should. Of course not. But with grilled cheese, you kind of make a mess if you just get in there with yep. a knife right away. Yep. So sit this one over here. And we're going to figure out what we're going to do on this next one here. I'm going to go with Bob's technique. I'm going to stick with the brioche now that I'm kind of figuring it out here. And was there another, any more butter, Bob? Uh, it should be right in front of you on the bottom shelf. Right in front of me on the bottom shelf. Yes, sir. Perfecto. I'm going to set that there. Mm-hmm. Go, turn that down just a tad. Get my Velveeta ammo here. Hey, Joe. It's almost test time. Now I'm just going to peel some of this ahead of time while we're waiting for that butter to get cooperative with us. We don't want that to burn. That's not good cooking. So, I am going to try Bob's technique here. one a little lower and I'm going to put a little surprise of Duke's mayonnaise people certainly do love that Duke's mayonnaise it, it is, is fantastic the talk of the Facebook world is it yeah a good friend of mine put mayo on everything but if he couldn't find Duke's uh, then he would go without 
So that kind of stuck with me over the years that every time I saw it, well, all right. And he knew a lot about me also. On this one, we're going to go with this. And that stuff wants to uh, start melting real quick. The metal spatula, where did that go? Oh, right here, I got her, I got her. Oh, yeah. Just like a head on a beer, that is where the flavor is. Absolutely. That, that, yep. That's why when you had mentioned the crust before, no, mm -hmm. no, 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 yep. no. You do with it what you want after it's served, but uh, it's staying on there. Give her that. Just for about 30 seconds. Okay. Build up a little heat, kind of get that cheese melted so we don't get her uh, burnt on the bottom, nice and brown. Cool. Is that beeping because of the other pan on there? I'm not sure, actually, to be honest with you. It's not happy about something. This crazy magnetic world of ours. For well, clearly it knows I don't know what I'm doing here, so that might be it. <laughs> it's kind of a warning. Oh, yeah. There we go. Lovely. Again, all-American sandwich. And that one's with the mayo on it, so we'll have to set that to side. Um, and that was just something that someone told me they did. I said, yeah. I'm going to try it tomorrow. Perfect. I figured we'd be doing uh, quite a few different ones. Perfect. All right, now we can, uh, I guess, just a steak knife to cut these other ones down. That looks delicious, Bob. And look how nice that uh, cuts if you have a little patience. <laughs> a little patience. So now that uh, Joe is here sitting at the bar, I guess we'll have to give him an opportunity to taste something as well. I'm not even going to ask Joe if he likes grilled cheese because I don't know anyone that doesn't. I like grilled cheese. I figured you did. That just sounds good going through that bread, too, doesn't, doesn't it? Isn't that beautiful? That just sounds good. So this is the sourdough, the San Francisco sourdough. Fun fact about sourdough bread is originally only men were allowed to be bakers in San Francisco to make sourdough because they were all bare-chested, and they'd be rolling the dough on their chest. And obviously women have uh, mammalian protuberances that got in the way, and they wouldn't, uh, wouldn't let that take place. At some point, they changed the laws so nobody could do that, and then you had a large influx of female bakers make an extraordinary sourdough bread. Yeah, this white bread doesn't have the same, uh, the same, same yeah. texture, the same crunch factor, the same. It certainly doesn't. But but again, I did. I like the brioche, and I wanted to give her a shot. Yeah. See, that one sounds very satisfying. Mm -hmm. And delicious. Cool. All right, I think that's us, right? That is us. So as far as a, uh, a sound-wise, you think about texture being not just something that you physically um, can appreciate because of the way the nuance would be on your tongue. From a textural standpoint, this one sounds the best. And I think that right after that probably is going to be the rye bread. Sometimes. Agreed. I agree. Uh, brioche is such a nice, soft, and dense bread. It just, uh, it's, it's marvelous. There's no, you can't say anything wrong about that. And then, of course, just the, uh, the American white the bread. All American. All American white bread. So I suppose I should do this in little party pieces as we're doing this for kids, right? <laughs> should I start yelling at people to go wash their hands? <laughs> well, we are. Uh, Mom, I already did. I didn't hear that. I didn't even hear the <laughs> sink on. Yeah. Instead of qualification, so sure. Right, right, right. Folks, I hope you, uh, you've enjoyed this, and uh, this will wrap up our episode. We're going to go and taste these things now and chat about that for a moment as well. But thanks for being here. Thanks for bringing us into your houses. And um, by all means, you should cook for yourself and cook for your friends, your family, the people that you love. 
and uh, thank you for sharing your time with us. Cheers. So the onions right here, obviously with the pickles, and uh, just the uh, the gorgonzola is this guy right here with combined with the uh, one year cheddar. Um, well, I guess we should dig in, gentlemen. Go ahead, Bob. I'll make this simple. I'll just grab this piece right here. So you can see how well the uh, gorgonzola has melted into the cheddar. I think that's just it's beautiful. The, in those pockets? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But cheese is hard not to like this combination. Wow. That is really good. Mm -hmm. The crunch, that delicate but firm inside, and then that, that uh, cheese just punches through everything. It is really good. I would have never tried that on a grilled cheese. That's excellent. Yum. Let's see what this is like. Bob, I'll tell you, that is a world-class grilled cheese sandwich. Joe, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Everything that really you, is. You got the internal umami, you got the texture, you got the sweetness, you got a little bit of that brine complexion taking place. This cheddar cheese is marvelous with this. The bread, the whole thing works. This is a beautiful sandwich. That's fantastic. Which bread did you use for that one? That's a pumpernickel, right? That's delicious. All right. That might be a winter uh, menu item. Mm -hmm. Which one do we have here? This one looks darker. I'm going to guess it was one of mine. Well, yep, this is the one you made. See the last one, the one before that. This one said was a burger. But that's beautiful. It's a Velveeta. Okay. That was Vel oh, Velveeta with a little bit of mayonnaise on it. Not my cup of cognac, but this is really nice, actually. This is this is 1974, I'll tell you the, what that the, is. The, the quintessential. This is 1974 yep. all over again. Saturday afternoon yep. during summer vacation. Yep. Quintessential all American grilled cheese sandwich right here. Yep. I actually like just that little bit of mayo on there. I was going to say, the mayonnaise I just, shows off the bell beater. Yeah. For lack of a better term. It definitely gives it more flavor. That is the Gouda and the uh, bread and butter pickles. Bread and butter pickles. This looks fantastic. Gouda, love Gouda. And I gotta stress again, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Let him rest just a minute. Mm -hmm. This would be very difficult just a couple minutes out of the pan. Wow. Wow. These pickles are extraordinary. And that gouda? Wow. I don't wonder if a smoked gouda might be too much for this. And this is just great the way it is. I debated whether to buy the smoked gouda because I didn't know what. Um, how we're going to play off of these. Yeah. Wow. Uh, there's one at, uh, <coughs> and it's just at Pick and Save in their little, uh, that specialty cheese aisle, mm -hmm. that I got a smoked Gouda that is smoked all the way through. All the way through, it is smoky. So you'd have to use that with something that's going to allow that bold, those bold flavors. Maybe that's where the uh, hammer bacon come in. There you go. Well, wow. a little palate fatigue here at this point, but these are all just delightful. Rye cheddar. I wouldn't have gone with the rye or the, um, the pumpernickel, mm -hmm. but that may be the go-to now. Just that firmer bread. The sourdough, fantastic. 
This is calling out for, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, this is calling out for mustard to me. Yeah, a stone ground mustard on this, I think it would just be the cat's ass. Hmm. Again, just makes people happy. Well, I'm glad I didn't have breakfast today. <laughs> what are yours, Paul? I'm, I'm going to guess. I think that was just the all-American ah. with no mayo, I think. Yep, back to 74. <laughs> wow. So your velvet de clock, did it just reset itself? I guess it did. All right. But I'm still not going to use this for mac and cheese. What was I, that? I would not use this for mac and cheese. No. Um, there's a difference be between having that gooey, warm plate in front of you versus something that you're going to uh, jam between two pieces of bread. Well, this has been a lot of fun. This was fun. Something as simple as grilled cheese. Again, iconic food stuff. Um, thank you, brother. No, thank you for having me. You know, I love coming to the kitchen. Always my pleasure. Folks, again, thank you. Cheers.